Welcome back ladies and gentlemen and uh, now we are on part two of this tale Khan and the caged bear fight where we left off Khan was about to face a cave bear alone with just a spear but now I'm getting to uh, where uh, his friends uh, and his siblings will come to save him but will they get to him in time? I'm afraid we shall, fi we shall find out. But for the meantime, sit back, relax, and get ready. It's about to begin. <clears throat> At that moment, on the outskirts of the great city of Tyros's empire, Khan's three sisters, Reyna, Kara, and Rayan, and brothers Darson, Arson, and Martin, and an old friend of Khan's, Zack Steelblade of Goldshire climbed off a horse-pulled cart uh, they were sat on. Thank you, my friend, said Rayner, and handed five silver and three gold coins to the young Imperial man driving the cart. Then they made their way to the white city of Linthodal. Khan and Zack met over a year ago where and they were part of, of the Skyvale armies as sent to the country of Blackrock in the northwest of Taros, a large and mountainous land and home to a race of moored elf folk often called Bretons. Khan and Zack were called up for duty to help the Bretons fight off Dark Elf and exiled Imperia and Pixie invaders from uh, from Ashamland and the Sangar Isles. They fought together on that campaign for over two years, building a strong friendship between them. So when Khan's siblings came to him asking for help to find Khan, he agreed to help them. This city is so beautiful, Kara exclaimed in wonder as they walked uh, into the city. Kara was short and rather fat for a Ragana with wide hips and waist as well as quite large breasts. But she still had palish brown skin, the dark green eyes of their father, the dark brown hair of their mother that went down to the back of her neck, a round nose and she wore a light green dress with a dark brown leather breastplate and black Mac belt uh, across her waist uh, with a long dagger hanging from her, from her left hip. She was right about the city. The large white tower loomed in the distance at the centre of the city. That was said to be the home of the Emperor, but the other buildings around them were built out, out of stone, wood and metal of every kind found in Taros but the Temple of the Gods was uh, the largest and widest construction after the White Tower, built uh, out of large pearl-white and pitch-black stone with large gems of many colours encrusted around a larger dark pine wooden door well, at the top of uh, the, get the white marble stairs. No wonder folks from across Taros come to see this city. It's so beautiful here, said Kara, and Re as Rhea and the Rayan all agreed with her. Can we focus on finding Khan? He could be in danger and need our help, Zack said firmly. Khan's siblings nodded, and then they all left to find the place where Khan was being held, little knowing that they were being watched and followed by a figure in a dark robe. Oh dear. Khan leaped out of the way of the cave bear as it charged towards him. Khan rolled over his shoulder and onto his feet. He gripped the spear shaft tightly and pointed it at the bear, his fear rising. Khan had read about the beasts of Taros, but the bears were what scared him most of all, especially the cave bear. Three reasons are because cave bears stand 13 feet tall, 
weigh three quarters of a ton, and, second only to their cousins, the ice bears that live in the far northern regions of Taros, are more muscular than any other bear. I always hoped that I would never face a beast like this, Khan said to himself as the cave bear then came charging at him again, but he had no time to get out of the way, and then the bear's head slammed into his stomach, knocking him onto his back and driving the air out of his lungs. Then the bear pinned Khan down between its front legs, but luckily Khan's arms were free and he was able to use the spear shaft to block the bear's biting head. Its breath was hot and rancid with the stench of rotten flesh, and saliva was dripping from its terrifying teeth. You have terrible breath! Khan groaned as he used all his strength to push the bear off him. Then he rolled onto his feet. Then he pointed the spit forward as the cave bear stood up on its hind legs and let out a bellowing roar that froze Khan's blood and shook his bones. Then the cave bear dropped back onto all fours. On all fours, it was as high as Khan's chest. Then it began and to circle the cage arena as Khan did the same. But then it slashed a, a huge paw at Khan, its claws raking a five-marked gash across Khan's chest. He winced in pain and staggered back from the force of the strike and dropped the spear which had broken in two where and the bear's claws raked down his chest, which was now dripping blood. You'll regret that, you beast of the mountains! Khan yelled as he feared, as fiery pain shot through his chest. The cave bear then stood up on its hind legs, raised its right paw and struck Khan again, swiping its huge paw into Khan's face, knocking him a metre through the air and uh, then crashing to the ground with another bloody gash from the bear, but this one on his face. Then, as Khan rolled over onto his back, the bear was on him, snorting out gusts of foul breath. Then, it lunged at Khan's face, but even as the young Ragana pushed it away, he was not strong enough. Thanks to his injuries, the bear had dealt him, and knew the bear would kill him. Oh no. Well, that's a bit, bit of a shocker. Zack Steelblade and Khan's siblings had better get to him quickly, otherwise he's going to be bear food. I'm afraid that that's where I'm going to have to leave this tale for now, ladies and gentlemen. But I will... Uh, br be your uh, posting the final part of the tale or later. But for now, please uh, like, subscribe, and most of all, leave a comment down below. It helps the um, channel grow when you do that. Right. Until next time, bye now.